Hi guys, my name is Gabrielle Suisa and I'm an undergrad working right here in the Cool Worlds Lab. Today I'm going to talk to you about my and David's work on the interior composition of exoplanets, basically what a planet is made out of. So here's a hardcore question for you guys. Even though these planets are hundreds of light years away, can we have any idea of what their interior composition is like? So I'm sure in science class some of you guys learned about the interior composition of the Earth. Let's go on a quick journey to the center of the Earth right now. You got your crust, you got your silicate mantle, you got your iron core that's split into your outer and inner core. So that's the Earth. But when we model exoplanets that are rocky, we can't really assume that they have the same layers that the Earth does. So we usually model them with the following possible layers. They can have an iron core, a silicate mantle, maybe a water layer, or a thin gas envelope. So now that you're caught up on the interior composition of planets, let me ask you again. Do you think that even though they're so far away, we can see what's going on deep below the surface of exoplanets? The answer is, it's really hard. The problem when it comes to exoplanets is, we really only know their mass and radius. Remember, 99% of the planets that we've detected are detected indirectly. That means we haven't literally taken a picture of them. So we don't really know what they look like, and it's not like we can send geologists down there to just like start digging. So we're stuck with mass and radius, two bits of information, when we want to know lots of information about four different layers at least. That just doesn't add up. This is what we call a degeneracy. There are too many unknowns and not enough clues. Here's a figure that explains exactly why the degeneracy is so problematic. Here you have two planets side by side, and they both have the same mass and the same radius. So from far away, they'd look like very similar planets. But if you knew what's going on below the surface, inside them, you'd see that they're actually very different. The one on the left has an iron core and a silicon mantle, and the one on the right has a much larger iron core and a water layer. So you can see these two planets are very different, but we wouldn't be able to tell with this degeneracy. This degeneracy makes it especially difficult to figure out how much iron is in a planet's core. What we'd like to measure is the CRF, or the core radius fraction. It's just the ratio between the radius of the core and the radius of the entire planet. So let's say you had a planet whose radius was two Earth radii, but its core was only one Earth radii. The CRF would be one divided by two, or 0.5. Let's take a look at those planets again. They're very different because they have different layers, but they're also different because they have different CRFs. The one on the left has a smaller iron core, so it has a smaller CRF. But again, just by looking at these planets, because we only know their mass and radii, we wouldn't be able to tell their CRF values. So you might be wondering, why do we care about the CRF? Why do we care how much iron is in a planet's core? It's because the presence of an iron core is actually really important for habitability. So we want to know the CRF. We want to know how much iron is in exoplanets' cores because we want to know if these exoplanets can be habitable or not. But like we said, we got this nasty thing called the degeneracy that's stopping us from doing so. But what I want to introduce to you guys today is a model we've created called Hardcore. Hardcore is a really simple, useful tool that will tell you the minimum CRF and the maximum CRF of an exoplanet just by using its mass and radius. How does it do this, you ask? It uses this neat little trick called boundary conditions. What are boundary conditions? Boundary conditions are just the extreme cases of a scenario. For example, the biggest possible thing, or the smallest possible thing, or if this was the hottest or the coolest. And actually, when you look at these extreme cases, what you learn from them can tell you a lot about what happens in the general case. So let's see exactly how Hardcore uses these boundary conditions. So here you have four planets, and again, even though they're very different inside, they all share the same mass and radius. The left planet is made out of an iron core and a silicon mantle. This planet has the smallest CRF of all the planets shown here. That's because iron is really heavy, and so if you want it to be the same mass and same radius of other planets who have different layers, 
you need the iron to be really small. So that means that if you have a planet that has an iron core and a silicon mantle and nothing else, its CRF is the minimum CRF you could have, the minimum boundary condition case. Let's look on the right. This planet has a very large iron core and a small thin envelope. Because this thin envelope basically weighs nothing compared to the iron, for it to have the same mass and same radius as all these other planets, for it to keep up, it needs to have a really large iron core to make it heavy. So it makes sense that the maximum CRF you could ever have in a planet would be one with this giant iron core and a very small atmosphere. Let's say I find a planet, an exoplanet, and I measure its mass and radius. I don't know what its interior composition is, but I can pretend. I can pretend that it's the minimum boundary condition. I can pretend that the planet I'm looking at has an iron core and a silicon mantle, even though I don't know that. But I can pretend and calculate the CRF as if it was that planet. And that CRF that I get would be the minimum possible CRF. So let's say I pretend my planet is iron silicon and I calculate the CRF and I get 0.4. Then I'm like, okay, that means that my planet, even though it might not actually be just iron and silicon, I know that its CRF must be at least 0.4. I can do this from the other side as well. I can look at this planet and pretend that it has a giant iron core and a small thin envelope around it. And if I calculate the CRF pretending it looks like that, then that CRF will be the maximum possible CRF that the planet I see has. And that's actually really helpful information for me to know that the CRF must be at least this number, but not any greater than this number. This range right here is a much better range than that. So hardcore, by using these clever and really simple boundary conditions, can tell us um, the minimum and the maximum CRF. For more details, I know it's a little confusing, but for more details, see the paper below. But the important thing is that hardcore has cracked the degeneracy a little bit. You know, we can't send geologists out there to dig on these exoplanets, but hardcore is basically doing that. We're digging into the surface of what we know and exploiting these boundary conditions and finding out that, hey, we don't know nothing. We know the minimum CRF and we know the maximum CRF. The appeal of hardcore is that it's really simple. It uses what we know and some stuff that we just didn't realize. And it's always fun realizing that you know more than you thought you did. This isn't gonna stop our search for breaking the degeneracy all the way. We still love to know the exact value of the CRF and exactly how much iron is in an exoplanet's core. We'd love to know how big the mantle is, if there's a water layer, how big the thin envelope is. But the nice thing about hardcore is that it's here now, it's a great step forward, and it's publicly available. That's right, you can go onto my GitHub, open hardcore, find a random exoplanet, or make up a random mass and radius, plug them in, and hardcore will tell you the minimum CRF and the maximum CRF of that planet. So hopefully you learned a little something about interior compositions of exoplanets today. If you wanna check out the code hardcore, you're more than welcome to go ahead. And definitely check out our paper for more information and details on our method. I had a great time working in the Cool Worlds Lab, and I'm sure you guys are having a great time keeping up to date with all the hardcore things that this team is doing. So make sure to subscribe, stay thoughtful, and stay curious. Bye! I've been told that I say iron funny, so forgive me for that. Iron core. Ir iron. 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 Iron.